everybody, welcome to another episode of the program. Uh, before we talk about volcanic eruptions witnessed by humans and the redating of when this volcanic eruption occurred, I want to make uh, I want to preface it with um, the shortcomings of radiocarbon uh, 14 dating. I mentioned this in the past a few times. A lot of people seem to not understand the details of radiocarbon dating, and I want to elucidate that right now. First off, the basic is it uses the fact that carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Basically means that is the point at which they know for sure that carbon-14 is 50% done deteriorating. Because the carbon content of all living things is practically in equilibrium, which has a specific isotopic composition, the isotopic composition of all living things slowly changes once they die. So they know, that's how they know, especially things that are carbon-based, how they know when they died, roughly, so to speak. And then this process stops, and the carbon-14 content of their body slowly decays. But the problem is with carbon-14 is anything beyond 10,000, 12,000 years or so, the accuracy becomes very, very inaccurate. The isotopic carbon proportions in the atmosphere are not fixed absolutely. They depend on various processes, including the flux of cosmic rays on Earth. So therefore, radiocarbon calibration curve has to be used to convert a raw carbon, radiocarbon age to a real or calibrated age. So what that means is whenever you see in a scientific article that says calibrated KCAL, that, that's what they're talking about, this calibration curve. Um, and these curves are in use that it does increase the accuracy but still it's again anything beyond a certain point it's not reliable uh, these ca calibration curves are created by comparing the radiocarbon ages of samples with the known ages of sediments and then there are other types of dating that are being used as either supplemental to radiocarbon dating or um, in place of radiocarbon dating depending on how old things are so one interesting uh dating is called a uh, zodiacal me method of dating which is which basically takes representations of different parts of our solar system more specifically the position of the earth in relation to uh space and they date from there so for example in this in this uh in this example the bison represents capricornus on the summer solstice so therefore, the date of this tooth in question, and they're talking the uncalibrated age of this tooth that they found, it's not really important, it's just a example. So instead of 13,800 to 14,700 BC, the date of the tooth, according to the zodiacal method, is 15,000 to 13,000 BC. So it doesn't seem like a big difference because you're, they're still ballparking it, but the zodiacal... Uh, dating is actually really good because it, there's no calibration required. You, you can just look it up on either different algorithms that they have. They have different computer programs where you can look up the night sky uh, or what the sky would look like rather at a remote time in, in history. And there are a ton of those uh, um, programs out there. And um, the only problem with Zodiacal Method is assuming what the whoever the creators were the artists were that made some sort of representation of the the cosmos that is gonna have to be uh, interpreted by whoever's doing the dating uh, but either way it's still a pretty good method the zodiacal method can tell the difference between uncalibrated and calibrated dates zodiacal method is now a practical and completely independent dating method for ancient artifacts the, this article that the volcanic eruption article does not uh, use the zodiacal method. It does use other types of uh, dating methods, and I, I just thought it was important to preface the article with with the shortcomings and the alternatives to uh, carbon fourteen dating. Okay, so now the actual article. So volcanic eruption witnessed by prehistoric humans. So there was a an, an eruption in uh, western Turkey. Again, we've been focusing on Turkey a lot. It's in the Kula province, which is in the west, way western part of Turkey. If you guys see this map on the top right, it's in this part here. Kind of where Troy might have been. Uh, a little, probably a little bit more inland than where Troy was, but still around the same region. And they found this depiction here that they believe is uh, recreating a volcanic eruption. 
So if that's the case, then that means someone was there to witness it happen um, in real time. So that is a big deal because this volcanic eruption was originally thought to have happened way long before uh, humans were supposedly, uh, anatomically modern humans were supposedly uh, walking around making art and stuff like that. Um, so this volcanic eruption was believed to be eyewitnessed by humans in prehistoric times 245,000 years later than originally expected. So um, this new research, which was published in the Quaternary Science Review, aimed to determine the age of prehistoric footprints are found in the ash layer produced by the Sakalar volcano, uh, volcano eruption. And this, uh, this is uh, just some of the um, formations that were created from these... Uh, I don't know about this this particular eruption, but eruptions uh, prior to this, so it's very it's a very beautiful spot, and this is the actual volcano here uh, in Kula, the Kula volcano or the Kula volcanic uh, field. So, along with the, so they found these footprints in the ash layer, and um, they also found that rock painting that was. Uh, talking about in close pr proximity to the eruption. So those two pieces of evidence are very uh, important and they correlate to each other. And they didn't make that connection back when they made the initial discovery. Um, the painting which illustrates the eruption of the volcano highlights how humans from thousands of years ago were able to illustrate natural phenomena in their own way. So um, that was what they saw according to them. And it's amazing because, they, again, they were not supposed to have these uh, capabilities back then unless there was some crazy redating of it, which is what they did. So previous studies suggested the footprints belonged to Homo neanderthalensis from the Pleistocene age. So they thought Neanderthals were, um, were the ones who were around. Um, but then now, obviously, it's probably not them because of the redating. Um, so... Just a little bit of background, the Kula footprints were found in the 60s by construction workers who were moving volcanic rock away from the volcanoes in the area, and then they were um, in this volcanic ash. So they, the recent uh, researchers, the ones who conducted this study in, in modern day, they first determined the age of volcanic ash that preserved the footprint. So right away, if you can date the ash, or let's give another example. If there was concrete and I stepped on it, um, and then thousands of years later they came back, if they somehow, some way, had some uh, method of dating that concrete, then they could surmise when that footprint was uh, imprinted there. It, they won't get the exact date, but um, they'll, they'll have a ballpark. And that's exactly what happened here with the volcanic ash. So they used two different techniques. A uh, radiogenic helium dating method was used to measure the eruption age of tiny zircon crystals. And the cosmogenic chlorine exposure dating method was used to measure the time that the volcanic rocks have been residing near the Earth's surface. So um, these two types of dates are very situational. And um, it's very interesting that they use these dates because normally it's hard to date stuff like rock and sediments um, otherwise. So, um, uh, unless there are sediment layers, which are uh, a, a little bit different, but they have nothing to do with this. So, they figured out those two things, and they were able to figure out um, when the volcanic ash was uh, appeared on the Earth and that, at that point. Um, so, the two independent dating approaches showed internally consistent results and collectively suggest that the volcanic eruption was witnessed by Homo sapiens during the prehistoric Bronze Age, 4,700 years ago. So, that's about... 2700 BC um, roughly around there and that that means that they were totally capable humans at that time were totally capable of creative thought um, uh, writing things down um, depicting things through artwork and it's a far cry from 245,000 years ago which I'm not even clear how they got that uh, date to begin with uh, it doesn't really say, but um, this is a huge correction. And it's used by things other than car radiocarbon dating, because again, radiocarbon dating is so limited uh, that a lot of people don't understand that it's not the end-all, be-all of all dating, unless it's within a certain amount of time, semi-recently. 
Uh, the research also suggests that after the initial eruption, humans and their canine companions slowly approach the volcano, leaving distinctive footprints in the wet ash blanket on the surface. So when the volcanic activity was going on and when it was tapering off, you know, humans are naturally curious beings. They, they approached with caution. They had dogs. Um, they had uh, 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 domesticated dogs, rather. And again, that, that wasn't that long ago. And that's where the footprints came from. Um, so Dr. Donisic, he says that uh, humans witnessed the final stages of the volcanic eruption from a safe distance, making it highly likely that Homo sapiens were also responsible for the rock paintings. Um, because not only because of their proximity, but they are able to conceive of and record uh, or paint natural processes such as volcanic eruptions in their own artistic way with limited tools and materials. So let's take a look at it again. So it doesn't look like much and it could easily be overlooked, but at the time, if you were to imagine the scene that was going on when they were painting this, it must have been a, there may have been other paintings around that we just haven't found and B, it must have been such a monumental moment in time for those people that they either must have thought God was coming or something was going on that was significant enough for them to even record it onto stone. And it, 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 this doesn't happen haphazardly. This is, uh, uh, this is evidence of a culture that was going through an awesome time uh, because of something as monumental and, and spectacular as a volcanic eruption. They must have thought either the world was ending, ending or something like that because they recorded it on something. And it must have embedded itself in, in their culture in some way, shape, or form. Um, and again, uh, they thought this was 250 some odd thousand years old, uh, or the footprints anyway. I don't, I'm not sure what they, how old they thought this was. Um, but either way, that's really fascinating stuff, and it's fascinating that it happened so much earlier than, than originally thought. So um, at first glance, this looks like something a cave you see in a cave painting that's 40,000 years old, 45,000 years old. It looks very similar. Um, but this happened in the Bronze Age. And again, the people of the Bronze Age, they had technology, they were pretty advanced. Uh, compared to hunter-gatherers anyway, uh, or people living in caves. So th again, this is a uh, very interesting that, and it's a testament to the people who are, who did make those uh, paintings at Chauvet Cave or whatever, the 40,000 plus year old cave, 60,000 year old uh, paintings in the caves. And if their paintings look similar to the ones in the Bron Bronze Age, then who's to say that the people back then were super prim primitive? Maybe they were Bronze Age level technology. We don't know. Uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think about this, about um, radiocarbon dating or zodiacal dating or whatever. And um, I'll talk to you guys later.